Right now, America has a little bit of science envy. Uh, so for example, we would have had the biggest particle accelerator in the world, but we don't right now. Uh, that happens to be in Switzerland, the European Center for Research in, uh, in Nuclear Physics. In French, it spells that word, apparently, I'm told. But that's, it's the acronym for it. And that's, of course, the Large Hadron Collider looking for the Higgs boson. We're not doing it. Europe is doing it. I'm a scientist. I can wear two hats. I'm, you know, as a scientist, I don't care who does it as long as it gets done. Uh, China, right now, you know, they've got the Three Gorges Dam, one of the largest dams ever. They have a burgeoning aerospace industry. Uh, we all know about China and their rapidly growing economy. Russia, what's interesting is they said, you know, we're going to deflect af asteroid Apophis, which is headed towards Earth. And if it hits, it's going to hit the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Malibu, California. So, and so they, they decided they're going to try to fund a mission. And they asked us if we wanted to join along. And of course, we're going to say, sure. But then I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. Wait, aren't we the ones who's supposed to be designing those missions and have other people say they want to join along with us? That was my evidence that America was fading. And even here, in the land down under, if I say Brazil, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Soccer, soccer good. He said soccer. He was very kind to me. He said soccer instead of football. Sarah, thank you for translating. <laughs> uh, anything else? Samba, good one. Samba? Somebody said sugarcane? Is no one saying, like, bathing suit tongs? There's no, does that not, because that's all I think of. I think of, like, barely dressed people on the beach. And this is, the, this is part of the delusion, because when you actually look at the numbers, Brazil has the third largest aerospace industry in the world. It employs 18,000 people third in the world, $20 billion industry. They invented the first airplane that can fly on alcohol. These are countries that are rising up as the rest of the developing world stands stagnant. I have a collection of these, and I just have to share them with you because it's, it, it's a reminder that some countries, and at some times, value the contributions of their scientists. This is pre-euro currency. Look at this. We've got Tesla in the upper right uh, from, from um, Yugoslavia. You've got uh, Copernicus from Poland. You've got, uh, who's this guy, Marconi from Italy. You've got Volta. People with like stuff named after them, Volta. He's got, he, this the Volt came from this guy. Uh, we've got Saint Achupere with a little image of the little prince there from the uh, Bank of France. But we flip over these, these bills. This is the backside, showing some iconography of their trade. We've got the first radio transmission in the bottom right, one of Tesla, Tesla's most energetic electrical coils. Here I have this in the upper left is currency from Romania that is made of polymer. It will not bend. Sorry, it bends, it will not crease. It's made of polymer. That's the front and back side. They're celebrating a solar eclipse that went across their country. The flip side is some artist's account of the solar system. We'll give him some artistic freedom there. But, uh, and down here, of course, England is celebrating Darwin. Let's keep going. We've got Euler from Switzerland in the upper left. I mean, for, um, uh, sw uh, yes, uh, Switzerland in the upper left. We've got Galileo, once again, Italy. My man, Isaac Newton, in the middle left. We've got, we've got Louis Pasteur. I don't know what they're doing to the dog in that picture. <laughs> Odd that whatever it is, they felt it was important enough to put on the bill. Uh, Michael Faraday here. We've got Carl Friedrich Gauss in the middle right. Now, wait a minute. What is that? This is, the, this is, this is a Deutschmark. Gauss is German. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a mathematical distribution function on the German currency. <laughs> Pi is in there, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute, what country had the best engineers? Germany, of course, of course. They have math on their money. You can go to the Middle East, it's even there. 
Here are two warring factions. We've got, I, I, well, it's Iraq, and we've got Israel, but we've got Ibn al-Haytham from a thousand years ago. He f first figured out that the eye doesn't send beams of light out of your head, that it takes light from the outside and you make an image on your retina. There's good old Albert. Not that he was Israeli, but when you're smart and famous, everyone claims you. <laughs> How about America? Oh. Actually, we have a scientist on our bills. Anybody know? We got Ben Franklin on which bill? Took you too long to say that. That means you haven't seen a $100 bill in a while, sir. $100 bill, there it is, Ben Franklin, a world's leading physicist, essentially. He wrote the, the, the book on electricity back in the late 1700s. So where's the lightning bolt? Let's see, hmm. No, I don't see a lightning bolt. How about the lightning rod? He invented the lightning rod. Surely there's a lightning rod on the $100 bill? No, not that either. He's not on our money because he was a scientist. He's there because he was a founding father. We have no memory of our science in our currency. Let's look at some of the cost of this. This is a map of the world where each country is apportioned the amount of land area that's proportional to its actual size on the globe which means it's a regular map. Okay, so now, <laughs> what we're gonna do is <laughs> distort the borders of each country in such a way to reflect how much science gets done in each country. It turns out there's insufficient data for Australia, so Australia's shape will just stay the way it is. Don't get alarmed, okay? <laughs> so just don't get alarmed. So let's watch what happens. How much science total number of published research papers per capita. Some countries will shrink, others will expand. Let's take a look. There it is. America's sitting fat and happy there. That's America. Yeah, we, we're, we do science. Okay, look what happens. The great tragedy of this map. Take a look at Africa. Near zero map area. The only area it has is at the bottom there. That's South Africa where there are actually observatories and physicists doing work. Uh, you've got Argentina there, you've got Brazil in South America. Wait a minute, what's this big purple zone in the upper right? I forgot, what was that? Wait a minute, what's that purple? It's Japan. Whoa. And, ta and take a look at Europe. They're, they're split up with Eastern and Western Europe. Uh, so the sort of pinkish countries are Western Europe. Look how large they become. What's interesting is the research in science correlates with wealth. The poorest continent is Africa. The least science goes on there. South America is not that far behind. Japan has a burgeoning economy. China is kind of on its way. But actually, this is not the map we should be looking at, no. We should look at the difference in science that's being published. Take, say, over a 10-year period, the theme of this workshop. So not the total science, the difference in science. I, so I keep looking at you guys and not like the front row. I should make more eye contact with you guys. I'm sorry. Did you feel left out a little bit? <laughs> she felt a little bit left out here. Because I'm just kind of looking over your head. So hi, guys, front row. You got here early. Good. Uh, so, let's look at the difference in science. That's the trend line. That's the writing on the wall. The difference in science between 2000 and 2010. The difference. The United States shrinks badly. We are still shrinking. South, South America is getting bigger. These are trend lines. Europe is huger, China is huger, Japan is still large. You want to see the world map of the future? That's the world map of the future. That's the last 10 years trend line of who's investing in science and technology. That's the world of tomorrow.